I had uh, forgotten to push record before. So, um, well, I can't Please, I'm in Cali here. It's uh, very good to, uh, to see you all. And um, it's very good to see Brother Walt and how God has seen him through. So I rejoice in being able to see him on the screen today and to hear a good report too that uh, it's been our hope and prayer that this surgery that has been a great concern uh, for him for quite some time, <clears throat> you know, he's been weighing that as an option and wondering, is it the right thing to do? And uh, to hear that it has had some, some benefit uh, and we pray that continues to be the case. Um, so we thank God today and, you know, we come together today, each of us, I think, with perhaps limitations in the flesh, but we're struggling through and praise God, he's merciful to us. And I just wanted to share <clears throat> some thoughts from, from David in the 37th Psalm this morning. And as much as my voice will hold up, I, I wanted to <clears throat> begin at the beginning and it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. And immediately I find it necessary to sort of think about that in many ways. And as I do, I think there are many reasons we might fret today. Um, as we look around at the world and we see sort of a uh, a boiling point being reached where people are getting more and more uh, worked up and, and staunch in their position. And, and we know that sort of thing leads to conflict. And we're kind of hitting, I think, even now and in the future, more of that point of confrontation uh, between good and evil. It sort of puts pressure upon us. And you know, there are many reasons we might feel concerned. One would be that uh, as we look at the, the flourishing of the wicked, and that's a strange phrase, but there's a song uh, that goes along with this chapter. I saw the wicked flourish like a green bay tree. And we think, well, what is that? Why would the wicked flourish? And you know, God allows them for a time to go out and do it their way. And in that time, there is a test of our faith that uh, results. And we might feel tempted to give in to that and say, well, uh, they're doing it, and it seems like they're getting away with it, and maybe they're taking the easy way out. Uh, you know, my, maybe we feel tempted to do the same. And I think there's other things too. We, we might feel um, pressured to do so. Uh, we might even feel uh, opposition or a coercion from evil people to go their way. Uh, but here it says, don't fret, you know, and I would say don't fret in any way. Don't fret uh, out of envy or doubt or fear, or temptation, uh, or, or, you know, becoming upset. Uh, and it says, neither thou be envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. And so um, there's a very temporary nature to the sinful way. It, it kind of um, rears its head, but it fizzles quickly. And this is a good characteristic to know uh, that we need to last through that time period of testing and hold on to the truth. And it says in the third verse, trust in the Lord and do good. And so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. And I love this next verse. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And, you know, delight, that means extreme pleasure. 
And, you know, we might often think of that as a bad thing. The world is often trying to lure us into the pleasures of sin. And a lot of times we use pleasure as a way of escape. And so you can escape uh, responsibility and accountability and enjoy things for a season, but we know that the, the things of, of the world, the things of sin, eventually do have their consequences. And so it's really better to avoid them. But here in this verse, we're getting a permission to delight and to delight in good things. And so we have a choice today. We can delight ourselves in those things that come at a cost that would come back to bite us. Or we can turn away from that and delight our, ourselves in the things of God. And that's not going to come at a hidden cost, but rather be a source of ongoing blessing. And so we can enjoy the, that sort of pleasure guilt-free and without fear of consequence. And so that's available to us today. And I really want to personally spend time meditating upon how it is that I can delight in the Lord. If I were to think about uh, moments in my life when God has blessed me with great joy and, and try to recall that and bring that back to mind, you know, perhaps in moments when I feel that temptation to fret, like these verses are saying not to do, that instead of escaping or turning to sin and the pleasures of this world, that I might reminisce upon the joys and the delights of serving God. And by so doing, bring to my, my mind a clear vision of what he has for us and be able to taste that and experience it. And it says he'll bless uh, us with the desires of our heart. And so, um, and he goes on to say, you know, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And so it's starting to set up this idea uh, little by little that we, we have to commit ourselves, trust in God, and wait upon him. And, you know, much like planting a garden, we know that the day of harvest will come. And we need not be frustrated and, and stop watering the garden or tear it out because it hasn't brought forth fruit yet uh, be, before it's due time, but rather wait upon the Lord knowing that just like the harvest in the garden comes, the blessings and promises that God has given will come. And, you know, in that song, by the way, it talks about how the evil, the wicked, the opposition that we face would uh, kind of it, would, it, would, it comes against us, it kind of lurches at us. And it, 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 it's, it's kind of, uh, it's more bark than bite, really, because it tries to make a big scene and, and get our attention and, and intimidate <laughs> us. And in that effort to intimidate us, we're tested. Our faith is tried. And we're reminded here that, uh, and even in that song, the Lord says, those who have held to the truth in so many words, they are mine. I will protect them. And so the little lambs who are you and I that are threatened by the wickedness of this world and the things that we, that we face, the, the trials, all of our problems, those things that would try to discourage us and cause us to go another way, to let go of the rod, he says, we don't have to worry about protecting ourselves. God's hand of protection is upon us. And all we need to do is wait upon him and he will preserve us. And so um, he goes on to say, uh, 
and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. You know, it, it's not clear sometimes in the midst of a trial that the outcome will be good. And, and again, we have a hard time visualizing that. Maybe, it, I, I don't know what it, what it brings about in your mind as you think about the delights of God. Are they easy to envision? Or do we have to kind of meditate upon that a little bit before we can sort of experience that and, and understand um, what it is to feel God's joy, God's delight? But it says this day will come when God will bring forth that, uh, that evidence of our faith and it will be clear. It will be like the light. It will be like the noonday sun. And so um, he says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And again, he says, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way. And uh, in, in, in the next verse, it says, cease from anger. You know, one of our forms of fretting might be just to become upset by all the things that continually come against us. But today, we're permitted by God's word, I believe, to lay down those concerns, to take comfort in the Lord, and to simply rest in him. And that might not seem appropriate uh, when the walls are shaking and threatened around you to be resting. <laughs> but the Lord is saying, don't worry. In fact, he says, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And so whether our temptation today is to become fearful or to become tempted to join the wicked or to become impatient or to worry or to be angry, whatever your fleshly reaction is today, we have this allowance by God to lay it all down and to find rest and delight in the Lord. And we really have to make a choice in order to partake of these blessings. We must choose the Lord because those are the ones whom these promises are offered to. So if we choose God, if we choose not to delight ourselves in the things of the world, but to delight ourselves in the things of God, then we have these wonderful blessings uh, that, um, that God has promised. And he says, for the evildoer shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And, you know, that's sort of an all-encompassing reward. It, it would take some time to sort of extrapolate what that means, to inherit the earth. But I don't know what it sounds like to you, but it sounds pretty significant to me. It's not a trivial thing. It's a great reward. And we could go on and on in the scriptures today about what that actually means, that we might inherit the fullness of the blessings of God. But I will just tell you today, they are more than enough to delight your soul. And so we can take great comfort today that we will... We, we should lay down the things of this world and delight ourselves by focusing upon the things of God and trust that the rewards that he has for those who do so are great and abundant and more than enough to fill your heart. And so we have abundant blessings to fill our hearts with joy today that are at stake if we prove faithful to the Lord, if we wait upon him and we rest in him. And so no matter how we might be feeling today, by and by the time will come when the temporary joys of this world will pass away and the eternal joys of the Lord will rise up and be clear as the noonday and we'll have blessings to hold on to that shall not perish or have consequence but are able to be enjoyed without guilt and pleasing before God. And so we have so many things that we can look forward to today. And, you know, it says, uh, as these things begin to 
become more evident. Guess what? It won't be us who's envying the wicked. The wicked will be envying us, and they'll become angry. And when they reach that point, it says that in the 14th verse, they will come out against us. In fact, it says the wicked have drawn out the sword now. Now they're coming at us full on. They're upset with us. They don't like that we're being blessed and that we're firmly entrenched and that we resisted them and their temptations and invitation to depart from God and follow their way. And so now they've drawn out the sword and they've bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and slay those who would be upright, it says. But it says in the 15th verse, their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. And so God will provide a mighty deliverance for his people. And in that song, the wicked shall flourish as like a green bay tree. He talks about the wolves coming against the righteous. But then he says his hand comes down and preserves them and says, no, those fruit are mine. He claims his people today. And we are to be his people if we would choose to obey him, not to partake of the world, but to separate ourselves. And so as we think about how we spend our days, our weeks, our months and years, the time is speedily approaching when we need to take full account before the Lord and say, this is how I chose to spend my life. I delighted myself not in the things of the superficial, of the flesh, but of the things of the spirit that you said were okay in your word to enjoy, that were pleasing in your sight and beneficial to our souls. And that's what God wants for us today. And so it's so beautiful as the... Um, uh, you know, as, as the scriptures go on here, it says, even in the 23rd verse, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Let us follow God's direction day by day, living our lives in a lifestyle that is ordered by God, that we would be taught of him and live the way he wants us to be, that we might be his delight and that he might be our delight that we might have that extreme pleasure in God. And so today, Lord, although the world would tell us that, that serving God is boring, in their blindness and in their eyes of sin, they cannot see what it is that we feel and experience in our hearts. And so God has mighty, mighty blessings for his people today. And he says... Um, he says uh, um, in, in the uh, 26th verse, he is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. He's talking about the state of the righteous, that we would be merciful to those around us and that we would try to lend to them. And what do we have to lend? Well, we have abundant blessings from the storehouse of God. We have everything we could need. We want and lack nothing because we have the promises of God to depend upon. And so regardless of our circumstances from one moment to another, we have a lasting promise from God to take care of us and to provide for us. And so we have great comfort, great, um, great assurance today to hold on to. And so we're in a position to lend to the world who has not. Let us not forget that we are wealthy. You know, that song, it says, uh, uh, come walk upon the bright side, the narrow and the right side. You know, and the Lord invites us to wealth in that song. He says, uh, he who takes of this water will never thirst again. And, uh, you know, it, finally it says, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. You know, these are the things that the Lord wants for us to do. And in the 35th verse, and this is what goes on with that song uh, that I was mentioning, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree, yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. And so all the things that are clamoring for our attention will one day quickly disappear. And the lasting promises of God will be what remains. So I praise God today that we have 
uh, a reason to rejoice today and reason to delight. And we need to just exercise our ability to receive those things and understand those things that would cause pleasure to our souls and, and feast upon them and turn away from those things that would threaten our well-being. So may, may God bless you. Today is my prayer. That was, that was beautiful, my brother. I, I enjoyed it. The things that you, you brought forth. I'm going to stay right here where you're at in the few scriptures here. And as um, you brought thoughts and that for my sister this morning when she talked about the word of God and we've seen different forms of it, even today as my brother began to read to encourage us to be understanding. Oftentimes we see the wicked prosper. But he begins to say, as Jeremy pointed out, I have something more for you to look at. I have some more things that you may understand and see. And I'll go back over to three and four. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. Shall thou dwellest in the land that the very thou shalt be fed. He said, also begins, it says in the seventh verse, rest in the Lord and wait patiently in him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because the man who bringeth wickedness deceives to uh, this device come to pass that God is telling us that we look at these things, but there's no prosperity in them. They can only bring you down. And when you hold the things of God and upright what they should be, as my brother talked about, he said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways because we're tasting the things of righteousness. We're tasting the things of God and we're understanding, we are seeing, and we can separate the thing, just like there's opposition in all things. There's the opposition to the spirit of good, opposition to the spirit of evil. And when you understand that, you gravitate toward the things of righteousness because God had put your steps in order. And once your steps are in order, I'm going to bring you down to the 37th verse. He says what? Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for he had for the end of that man is what? Peace. And the peace become because he understand the righteousness of the word of God. And now, as I went back in the seventh, verse, he's resting in the Lord. He's not worried about those things. For what purpose? Why is he not worried about those things? And we come over to the 39th and 40th verse, it says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of what? Trouble. And this is why we rest in the Lord. We don't worry about those things. And it says what? The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them because they trust in him. As Jeremy opened up with that, when we trust in the Lord, we don't have to envy the things the wicked do, but know for surety we're serving a righteous God. And the bountiful of the righteousness is more than the wicked, more than the blessed. Because what? We first seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And since we have the righteousness of ourselves, we're seeking the righteousness of Jesus Christ because he's an indwelled in us. Therefore, we rest in the Lord for my labor and for my work and for my battle because God is going forth to fight our battle. Therefore, the steps of the righteous are ordered because we see the ways of Jesus Christ. I like to say we picked up his characteristics. And we desire to be like him. Therefore, we like, as, as Elmer said, and Nephi says, I, I hoard evil. I want to be no part of my members, in my thoughts, in my action. But I desire the things of God abundantly, that my thoughts and actions all will be righteousness, because I'm following the steps of God that God has given me. Thus we trust in the Lord in all things that we shall do, knowing the unknowing, know for he will always deliver us, and we are faithful to those things. I like to say that virtue then may come from the throne of glory, and God may say, who touched me? And you say, here my Lord, I touched you, because my faith claimed you, and the victory you have given me, because the righteousness of thy word, my Father. This was on my heart today, as my brother spoke, and the things that God brought forth to me. Amen. Good messages from both of you. And again, it puts me back in the one of my favorite scriptures as we talk about trusting in the Lord. You know, in third song, four Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So as, as we and as the world get confused in life, 
it comes back to that trusting in the Lord. And in, you know, we've all practiced that. You know, we've all also forgotten about it sometimes when, you know, things overwhelm us, we, we try to fix the problems ourselves instead of, uh, like Jeremy, you said, that's another one of my favorite scriptures is the, 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 the uh, resting in the Lord and delighting in the Lord and committing in the Lord and trusting in the Lord. You know, all those four elements uh, are what we need to use our life's experience with to kind of get us through to the next challenge that we have in our life. And as we've said many, many times, people watch us. They look. You know, our, our kids have gone in different paths, right? The education of the world and, and all the uh, social media and all the news buzz and all that stuff that goes on, you know, has is, is, is directed our kids into other avenues, you know? And I don't want to say they're wicked, um, but I'm hoping that as, as they experience life and, and the good things that happen to them and, and the bad things that happen to them, that they might reflect upon those of us who've trusted in the Lord all of our life. And somehow, some way, like that prodigal son, come back. It may take a long time. You know, we've got a granddaughter. We've mentioned that. She's off to college, and she's going to go to Missouri, and she can hardly wait to get away from home and experience life. And she's even testing it here and breaking her mother's heart. You know, and, and uh, we've kind of all been through that already. You know, and... and uh, you know, we, we, we try to give her counsel and whatnot, but you can't say anything to these young people today. They, they have their direction and mind made up, and unfortunately, it's not on the ways of the Lord, and, and that, that hurts, you know, and we're going to have to watch them go through some struggles and some of life's learning, maybe like we did, you know, at some point in time, but it's, it's tougher when your kids are going through it or your grandkids and, and your neighbors and your friends and all. So, I think if nothing else that uh, we've got to be able to trust in the Lord and delight in all the blessings that he's given us. And we need to commit ourselves even more so in this day and age to his ways, you know, and then uh, that heart thing, right? Resting in the Lord and being patient. Um, can't do that by ourselves. We got to do that with the Lord. So great messages from you brothers tonight, today, and uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, you all the bear testimony. Joan's not here, so we have to have somebody else set it up today. <laughs>